we're going to start with our image quality menu. There are a lot of options in here, but most of them have to do with your image styling, how your final image is going to look. And we're going to cover a lot of those later. For now, let's just go into the settings that you need to set up to start capturing images now. Image size is where you're going to set the size and shape of your JPEG files. If you're only recording the raw file format, this isn't going to apply. You have three size options, small, medium, and large. Large is going to be the full sensor size. Every pixel is going to be recorded without downsizing. Medium is going to be half of that. And then small is going to be half of medium or 25% of the large size. If you're only sending these photos to social media or friends or even a website, the small size is plenty big. However, if you're going to be making large prints out of these JPEG files, or you want cropping options, you may want to record the medium or large file size. Otherwise, medium and small will help you save space on your memory card. And then there's also some aspect ratio options. 3 to 2 is the standard rectangle, the normal rectangular shape of the sensor. Every pixel is going to be there in that JPEG file. Nothing will be cropped. A 1 to 1, however, is a square that is going to cut off the sides of that JPEG file and discard them, and they're going to be gone forever. 16 to 9 is like that movie letterbox format where the top and bottom of that JPEG file are going to be cropped, discarded, and gone forever. 4 to 3 is going to be a rectangle that's between a square and 3 to 2. 5 to 4 is going to be closer to a square, reminiscent of a medium format camera. 4 to 3 and 5 to 4 are not available in the X-H2S, only the X-H2. Unless you're doing some kind of artistic challenge, I would always just recommend keeping the 3 to 2 aspect ratio, and then you can crop later if you need to. Image quality is where you're going to set to record either a RAW file, a JPEG or HEIF file, or a RAW and a JPEG HEIF file. RAW file meaning that it is completely unprocessed, and you will have to process it later on a computer to get the look that you want. JPEG and HEIF files are already processed in the camera with the rest of the image quality settings that we're going to learn about later. You can also record both the RAW file and a JPEG or HEIF file. When you choose a JPEG or HEIF file, you'll set the quality of that file. Fine is going to be the highest quality. It's not going to be compressed very much, so you'll get a higher quality photo, but also a larger file size. Normal is going to be compressed even more, so more information is thrown away. It's going to be a lower quality, but a smaller file size so you can fit more of them on a memory card. If you only want to record the raw file format, you can just select raw here. Or if you want to record the raw and JPEG or HEIF file, you can set raw plus the quality that you want to save. My own personal preference is to record raw plus fine. I always have that raw file as a backup, as an archive, but I also have the processed JPEG file. So if I get my JPEG right in the camera at capture, I don't have to process anything. But again, I still have that raw file backup. Raw recording sets the compression for your raw files. If you don't want to compress your raw file at all, choose uncompressed. It will give you a larger file size, but guarantee that it can be read by any image reader. Lossless Compressed uses a proprietary algorithm from Fujifilm, which manages to compress a RAW file into a much smaller file size, almost half, but without losing any image quality. However, some file browsers can't read the lossless compressed format. Your image editors like Capture One and Lightroom and Photoshop can all read the lossless compressed format. But if you're just using a file browser like Mac Finder, you may not be able to see those thumbnails if you're using the lossless compressed format. Compressed is going to give you a much smaller file size than lossless compressed. There is some image quality loss in there, but it's still a raw file and you can fit even more of these on your memory card. 
Select JPEG HEIF allows you to replace those JPEG files I was speaking of earlier with the high efficiency image format. This newer file type will give you greater color depth and at a smaller file size than JPEG, but there is a cost. The cost being that it's not completely compatible with all operating systems, apps, or devices yet. So if you'll be sharing your files directly from your camera to an unknown source, you'd be best going with JPEG for now to ensure universal compatibility. We're going to skip ahead past the other settings we'll learn about in a later lesson and go to long exposure noise reduction. If you're only recording the JPEG file format or HEIF and creating long exposures, I'd recommend turning this on. Otherwise you can keep it off. You can read about exactly what this does in the text for this lesson. It'll just give you cleaner images for exposures longer than about eight seconds. The Lens Modulation Optimizer contains a database of all Fujinon lenses, their optical characteristics, and their flaws. Even the best lenses have some kind of flaws like chromatic aberrations or distortion. And so what this does when you have it on is that it will correct for those flaws and characteristics, giving you a much cleaner image for whatever lens that you're using, as long as it's a Fujinon lens. So I would always recommend keeping this on. In the color space menu, you have two options. And you may have heard that Adobe RGB is a much larger color space, allowing you to record more colors. And while that is true, you also have to take into consideration where your photos are destined, what they're going to be viewed on. If your photos are going to be viewed on any kind of digital device, a smartphone, tablet, computer screen, even if you send it to a commercial print lab, all of that is going to be using the sRGB color space as a universal color space. So think of it as a language. You want to record your photos in the same language that all of those other devices are going to be using to show your photos. If you have a large format printer at home and you're going to be doing color managed printing and you have years of experience doing that, go ahead and set this to Adobe RGB. But for the rest of us, I would always recommend recording in the sRGB color space so that our photos are speaking the same color language as our display devices. And just note that these options only affect the JPEG file. You can always change the color space of your RAW file. If you ever notice a dead pixel, so like a white spot, a single pixel that's not recording any color at all, you can try to recover that using the pixel mapping feature. Only do this if you need to. Make sure that you have a fresh battery when you start and the camera is cold. And unfortunately, Fujifilm cannot guarantee that that pixel will be recovered. The custom settings menus are where we will create our own custom presets and we'll explore those more towards the end of this course. If you're using a third-party lens, either directly on this camera, or if you're using a mount adapter, you're going to set that lens's focal length in the mount adapter setting menu. This is the only time you need to go into this menu, and it will help your camera optimize other settings by knowing the focal length of the lens that is on there. And in here, you'll also set other kinds of distortion control like the lens modulation optimizer does but here you can set all of those manually in the mount adapter setting menu, controlling things like peripheral light correction, otherwise known as vignetting, barrel or pin cushion distortion, and some other things as well. In the next video, we are going to explore our autofocus and manual focus settings.